Uh, today I'm doing a little extra video for Road to Exploration. I've had uh, the question a few times about how I build my rockets and how my rockets are put together and that sort of stuff in the comments. So I thought I'd answer it because, um, well, I don't really have anything to record today and I thought it might be interesting. Um, so basically I'm just going to look at kind of my rockets and how they're put together and then I'm going to show you how to build one from the ground up. So yeah, we're going to need a probe, I guess, just to kind of look at it. Um, I guess we'll start with the Pulsar 4. And then the Pulsar 3 is basically similar, so maybe just the Pulsar 2. So yeah, the Pulsar 4 is my big one, and the one that launches the big stuff right now, until I make a bigger one. And the main thing is the first stage, which is rather beautiful. Um, and you can see that it's kind of an 8-engine square sort of setup, kind of like the original Falcon 9. The original Falcon 9 obviously had 9 engines, hence the word, hence the number 9. But it was in this kind of square configuration, except all of its engines were the same size. I'll explain that later. Um, but yeah, I kind of like this. It doesn't have to be like this, but it basically spaces the engines kind of nicely. Um, and then the second stage is just one big skipper engine. So yeah, how are these put together? Well, the engines, are, you, you may notice that a lot of the time I use these kind of um, tail parts for planes right here um, to put engines in. So what I'll do is, well, I'll sh you can see that each of these is just connected to one of them. Uh, so what I'll, what I'll do is I'll just kind of put that there, put the engine on, and then use the offset tool to move it to where it needs to be. You know, it's a fairly simple idea. And that just gives you kind of this smooth thing where you can have a slightly bigger engine base than normal engines. Um, obviously the second stage is fairly self-explanatory. Um, the parachutes are obviously just for landing. The way I don't burn fuel out of this is just by clicking these buttons. You'll see if it's like this and this, you can kind of tell it whether or not to burn fuel or not from the stage. Um, and basically the big thing about you reusing rockets in KSP is um, inside, you're going to need a probe basically, and you don't want it on the outside because that'll drag. So inside all of these stages there are little ca little pods of control, um, there's a, basically just a probe and a battery um, and an antenna because I'm using remote tech, so that basically gives it the uh, command to go to the ground. You probably don't need an antenna unless you're using a, a remote tech. And the way I do this is I, I've got this nice little mod, um, the RLA Stockerlike mod, uh, which provides these... shit. <laughs> okay, apparently I can't actually grab this out of there. I think that's stuck in there for eternity. Yeah, alright, well, I'll just show on the outside. Anyway, so the RLA Stockerlike mod um, adds a couple of parts. This and this, which means you can attach things kind of radially, radially downwards. So what I'll do uh, to do this is um, I'll, I'll just attach everything to this with uh, so a probe, a uh, battery, of course, and a battery, 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 battery. There we go. And I need an antenna, I guess, as well. Um, so that's that. Yes. Nice. And then you just offset it. Um, basically, I get the center of mass, and then I offset this such that the arrow is pointing to the center of mass. And that's how you make uh, kind of all of your stages actual spacecraft, which can just be useful, but sometimes you don't want to control from your payload, but is also pretty um, uh, imperative reusable rockets. And I do the same in here, the exact same little module. Um, and yeah, I use drogue shoots here just to slow myself down a little more. Uh, but yeah, that's basically the uh, basics of this rocket. Uh, if we take a look at the uh, Pulsar 3 and 2. Um, oh, KSP has crashed. Good. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back after my little game crash. Uh, nice thing about OBS is it doesn't lose footage when you crash. Um, all right. So the next rocket, I guess, is Pulsar 3. This is remarkably uninteresting because it's basically the same as Pulsar 4, just smaller. It uses just a normal ring configuration for the engines. Um, oh, I didn't explain why some of the engines are different sizes. It's because... Uh, Obviously, I need engines that gimbal, which are the smaller ones, and obviously, I'm sure you all know this, but uh, the, and the, these ones don't gimbal, but they provide more thrust and are more efficient, if we take a quick look at that. Um, basically, uh, these, uh, they're all pretty fine-tuned about the amount of um, engines I use, uh, the amount of engines I use, so you can see this has um, 15 kilonewtons more thrust, which is really nice, um, and a lot more thrust at sea level. Uh, it has, what, like 32 more, 32 more kilonewtons at sea level? and is so oh, actually slightly l more efficient at sea level which is good which is weird because that has a bigger engine bell whereas this is a smaller one so that makes no sense but basically ksp logic because i mean what well, this is a vacuum engine no no it's not <laughs> but you know i guess they kind of picked that later anyway so yeah it's pretty much the same it has the same 
package in here. It does carry this tank of fuel for reusability, but I usually use about half of this on ascent. Um, and then the top stage just uses a poodle engine and a couple of fuel tanks here, as you can see. Um, and yeah, pretty uneventful on this one. So, I mean, the next one is slightly more interesting, the Pulsar 2, my smallest current active rocket. Um, what's the Antares 1? Oh, this was my old satellite launcher. Yeah, this is a very old rocket, not reusable. Uh, anything else cool? Pulsar 2? Oh, yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Um, Ares Monopro... <laughs> I've got to stop looking at Ares 3 side panels. Oh, yeah, when I'm designing my uh, dragon. Anyway, all right, I'm just looking through there. Yeah, this is a boring rocket. Well, it's actually an interesting rocket, but not what we're looking at. So, yes, the Pulsar 2. The Pulsar 1 was my old moon rocket, which I do have somewhere. But anyway, um, so this... Uh, I'll leave the fairings off right now so you can see inside it, but basically it launches with fairings, as I'm sure you've seen, and doesn't deploy them because uh, if you look at these, um, and if I edit fairings, if you look at the cost right there, it's about a grand I'm not throwing away each time. Um, so yeah, this is just a small five-engine rocket. It uses three gimbling engines and two non-gimbling engines to get enough thrust to actually lift reasonable payloads. Um, they all use a small amount of wings uh, down here. These I just use basic fins because they just give me a tiny bit of stability in the scent. And it is the same with the other other rockets you may have seen. Um, and then this has landing fuel because, oh, I didn't actually mention that, but basically the tanks at the top for my other rockets, that's landing fuel, right? Um, and this has a tiny amount of landing fuel, but because the others, the others have that uh, kind of quarter tank at the top, you can see that that would be way too much fuel to add to this. So this just has a tiny little tank which slows it down just enough to deploy its parachutes and um, because it's a much older rocket it has all of its uh, kind of its control package in the fairing as well as opposed to in the rocket. So that's how you would do it in stock. You would put it in here um, and it has its antenna and things. And then the the thing up the, the, the top stage um, uses the not the same way of putting actually how have I done that? Look that looks slightly different. Oh yeah actually in stock um, I mean, this isn't quite stock because it's using a smaller version of this radial attachment panel. Now, I haven't, I haven't seen this rocket in ages. Well, I haven't seen the internals of this rocket in ages because it's so old. But it's a smaller one of them, and what I did for this, I'm pretty sure, was actually... Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, oh, fuck. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, what I did was I attached this, I rotated it 90 degrees, and then just threw that in there. And that's how you do that in stock without that nice little radial attach here which um, I've been using. So yeah, you can see that's how that works. But yeah, those are all my rockets. I'm sorry I kind of forgot to mention like the landing fuel, but that's how, um, basically the pot, this lands entirely on parachutes, but slows down with the fuel. Um, the Pulsar, let's grab that. Let's just take a look at that as well, because I really should have mentioned that. So yeah, the Ares one, it uses that little bit of fuel to, the Ares two even uses that little bit of fuel to land. Um, I will fucking money yeah. <laughs> yeah, to la uh, no to slow down and uses parachutes to land um, this uses uh, like about half a tank of fuel which I burn off that much in ascent but uses about that much fuel to slow down and do an assisted landing with parachutes and engines uh, and the pulsar 4 does the same thing but it uses the entire top tank of fuel to um, land so yeah that's how they all land as well sorry I kind of forgot that I'm terrible at my job <laughs> Uh, is there anything else? All of the top stages um, land pretty much on water. They just land on parachutes. On land, they use the engines to slow down so they don't explode. But yeah, all right. So let's build a rocket from scratch. Let's just see how I would do this. Because that's probably more useful than any of this. So say we just have a fuel payload. Um, all right, so yeah. we. Ooh, God damn it. We have a fuel payload of 10 tons. We just want to take 10 tons of fuel to orbit. That's 9 tons. Uh, we need something that weighs a ton. Uh, anything? Uh, fuel tanks. I have, two, I have additional... Uh, yeah, what's that? Maybe a ton? Yeah, that's about 10 tons. Alright. Um, one of my favorite tools for helping me build stuff is MechJeb. Uh, so we'll just call this 10 ton. Oh, shit. Um, nice. Yeah, 10 ton. Alright, so yeah, my favorite tool uh, for building this sort of stuff is MechJeb. It's a great mod. Uh, I always use it because it gives me the right amount of delta V. And basically, simple rule of thumb, you need about 3,500 meters per second total to get to orbit. Um, so yeah, I'm going to need a decoupler to deploy this in space, of course. I'm going to need 
um, my fairing so that it's not too bad and so that it doesn't have a bunch of drag in the atmosphere that it doesn't need. So we're going to close off that, make it look pretty. There we go. All right. Uh, okay. So basically, we're going to need uh, a, a certain amount of delta V to lift this. Let's just say maybe. Well, well, we need 3,500 meters per second. So um, we're just going to get the delta V window open. We're going to see how much this will get us. Yeah, 1,400. All right. <clears throat> so if we put a bottom stage on there as well. Um, I don't want to pay for that. This is actually my game save, so I'm not going to pay for that. Uh, if I did this um, through a skipper on the bottom, that would give me 3,200. Not enough to get to orbit. All right, so uh, what do I need to increase? I reckon increase the top stage first. So we put an extra fuel tank on there. Figure that out. 3,500 meters a second. Kind of accurate, kind of pretty good. But if you look at the sea level thrust of this, it's not enough to get off the ground. So this isn't going to do. Um, now... We're going to slightly increase the size of this as well because it needs more, because it's going to have more thrust, so it's going to need more fuel. And we're going to do my standard uh, engine configuration. We'll do um, some more interesting, I guess. Let's give it six engines just for shits and giggles. Um, in a weird configuration, let's try. Uh, like this. Right. Okay. Yeah, let's try it. Let's try it. Oh, fuck. Uh. Okay, kind of want it like so there's a bunch on each side like this, so it's kind of almost, so it's not so much a circle, it's a circle by accident. Alright, <laughs> okay, we'll just do a circle, because I'm horrifically uninventive right now, uh, and I think I'm just actually, and we'll throw on a bunch of gimbling engines, and yeah, there we go, that is enough thrust to weight ratio there. Um, in space, this will have almost a G of thrust to start with. Uh, if we show long stats, you can see that our max thrust to weight ratio is uh, 1.6, so we'll have more than enough thrust on the top engine. Uh, we'll have more than enough thrust on the bottom. It starts at 1.64. We'll just oh, full stats. Just give me short stats. There we go. All right. So yeah, that is really good. But uh, right now, it's going to probably be unstable and flip out in the atmosphere. So we'll throw a bunch of basic fins on there. So it's not too stable, and it has to be stable coming back, because, okay, this is a reusable rocket. Alright, so, we're going to need parachutes to land it. So we'll just um, throw on some parachutes to land this rocket. Where are the parachutes? Where are you? Where are you, parachutes? You fucker. Okay, right. Oh, are they aerodynamic now? I don't know. Doesn't matter. So we'll just get six of these. Yeah, I think six should do it, probably. Maybe. Um, and we'll need two on the top stage from experience. And we'll also need. Oh, fuck. Drogue shoots? Yeah, a couple, because it's going to be coming back much. It's coming back from orbital velocity on the second stage. Uh, so, yeah. <clears throat> and it will also need a probe, I guess. But we could put the probe in, and you get the idea. But yeah, that is how I go about building a rocket. That's a quick look at all my rockets. Um, and yeah, I hope that was semi clear. I just thought it would be nice to take a look at them for a little bit. Uh, at it, all their majesty. This actually isn't a bad rocket. Maybe this should replace one of my current ones. Although it has too much thrust to weight ratio. It's too high. I keep them around 1.2. Pro tip, tape tip. Alright, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you've had fun looking at my rockets. And I hope my build guide was informative. It was fairly simple. Because building a rocket basically is quite simple. Is how much thrust do I need? What is the most tenacious way I can put engines on there? Because I like this, a few engines rather than a bunch. It just looks nicer. Um, well, no, a few, a few engines rather than a bunch? That made no sense. Um, a few engines rather than one big one. Like, that's so much prettier than... Ooh, I think I've designed my next rocket. Oh, oh, sex. There we go, you can have that one for free. That's, that's beautiful. That is the most beautiful rocket I've ever seen. I've just designed my next rocket. It's going to be called the something star. Oh, well, Pulsar's already a star. Um, okay, that's amazing. You can also do shit like that. Be tenacious with your engine designs. Make them look pretty. Don't just put one rocket on there. Put like a gajillion. Put a booster in the side. Do that. It'll spin a little bit. Don't do that. Don't ever. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, and also if you need more thrust boosters, obviously. 
Um, but yeah, anyway, what was I saying before I just freaked out at this? Oh, beauty. Yeah, so basically have 3600 meters per second. It has not enough delta V now, but make sure it has maybe 35, 3600 meters per second of delta V. Make sure it's reusable if you really care about the world. Uh, make sure it has lots of cool engines, but, well, also you don't need lots of cool engines. This is a fine rocket. This will do the job even better than my other my other rocket. This is just, this is a superior rocket, but it doesn't look as cool. Anyway, I, I'm rambling. I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Care with Tape. I'll see you next time.